Who doesn't like to travel? Most everyone enjoys a nice getaway from time to time. Unfortunately, the majority of us are either confronted with the lack of time or the lack of money or the combination. Well, lucky for me, I'm beating the system with a solution for both. My girlfriend is a flight attendant, which lands me in a unique position to fly worldwide for free. That fixes the money issue. As for time, well, I've always been a prisoner of free will, going and coming as I please like a modern day nomad. As far as I can tell, I only have one life to live, so I live it on my terms. However, this free flying is not without conditions. No seat is ever promised, no destination is ever clear, no plan is ever perfect. Follow me as I fly all over the US by way of standby seating only, where punctuality is never a guarantee. Join me as I pick destinations and weasel my way through the air, one airport after another, layover after layover, rejected seat after rejected seat. Just to reach a destination, I probably could have driven too quicker. As I explore local landmarks and native to-dos, sharing on my laughs and disappointments, missed flights, long drives, and long nights. After all, I can only fly standby. far and few things that I enjoy more than traveling, meeting new people, and discovering hidden gems. Our country is full of exciting folk and history, unique little towns and overwhelming big cities. There is no way of ever knowing most of the places by the typical reasons of travel. That's why I let Mr. Bucket decide my destinations, to land me places I never in a conscious mind would have chosen to explore. Huh, where to today? Come on, Hawaii. Okay, well, now we got our destination, California. Not exactly a bad one for the first episode. I would love to spend some time in California. Who wouldn't? Now, time to consult the boo. Let me see how big old smile. <laughs> well, boo, I uh, consulted with Mr. Bucket. California is what he's picked for us. And the dark got closest to San Francisco. Well, heck, that kind of news just makes me want to do the happy dance. <laughs> Now, doesn't that make you feel better? I know what did me. Enough of the monkey business. Let's get to San Francisco. Head, I have come to seek you in all your wisdom. What is it you have come to seek, my child? I have come to seek your foresight into this trip into San Francisco. I foresee a smooth flight, direct, with no issues. Thanks, Head. You're welcome, Sax. Well, it's about 5.30 in the morning, Tuesday morning. So far, we found uh, four seats, standby, direct, uh, Denver, San Francisco. So hopefully those seats still stay like that by the time we get there. Morning, Lagomas. Go potty. If you like what you're watching, don't forget to first subscribe, then like, and hit the bell so you can be notified of all the future episodes. Thanks for watching.
So I gotta run to the store for run to Walgreens for my boo real quick. Just need a couple things before I can take off. Coffee. Can't start day at all without some coffee. I'm just not functionable. So yeah, in the morning, made my coffee for sure every day. But anyway, we're gonna run over here, hit this store, and then uh, get back, finish packing up, and look at the flight, see how they're still looking, and then hopefully still looking good. But this is flying standby, man. You never know what you're gonna get. Walgreens ain't open yet, so uh, I guess we're gonna have to try something different. seats have turned into three all we need is two so hopefully that stays the same or at least continues to be two for our direct flight from denver to uh, san francisco but uh <laughs> this is flying standby so don't count on it but we'll uh get back with you when we get to the airport peace all right so i made it to the airport now i gotta go through the security see how that goes Super busy in here like always. So a lot's changed. Went from the four seats down to three, down to one. So, we had to separate two different flights. I've gotta to try to go from here to Aspen and then try to catch a connecting flight from Aspen to San Francisco. She has to go from here to LA to try to catch a seat available in LA to San Francisco. So, it's gonna be interesting. We'll see how this works out. So I got on this flight to Aspen, the first leg. We'll see how it works out from Aspen. Expected an on-time departure, on-time arrival in Aspen. Flight time is short, very short, 25 minutes or less. We'll be cruising at 22,000 feet over the Rocky Mountains. A little bit of a bumpy ride today. Expected requested flight attendants to stay seated. Because that seatbelt's gonna help me at 30,000 feet. Okay, Sax, let's go.
in Aspen, go in here, and then uh, check in, and hopefully get on this next flight to check out to go to LA because there's no open seats for uh, Aspen to San Francisco now. Whew. Tell you what, this is fun. So, Aspen, San Francisco, direct flight. No mas. Uh, but luckily, looks like I'm only going to have to be here in Aspen for about half an hour and then get to uh, LAX from here. And then hopefully they got seats from LAX to San Francisco for me to get on. <laughs> so, Jesse, you fly standby a lot? I do. You enjoy it? I, I have. Um, this year so far, I've visited a different country every month, and you never know where you're going to end up. Um, sometimes it's extremely fun, and sometimes it's, uh, it's pretty rough, and uh, you just have to be patient and, and know that it's just all an adventure, and you'll end up somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you for your answer. Appreciate that. Off to LA, about to load it on up. This show on the road, Aspen right now to LA. Let's do it. So here I am in LA. So far, I've been flying uh, Denver, Aspen. Now, Aspen, LA. Look at that. Two, three hours, three and a half hours of flying time so far. And then it's a little after one o'clock. So this plane is supposed to take off at two o'clock to San Francisco. So we'll get there yet. Maybe the seats are still questionable. We're going to find out. Not looking so good on this standby ticket. Negative. TSA regulations require that baggage must be supervised at all times. Look at that handsome bald man over there. We're going to get him hooked up in a good seat. Okay, so. Brilliant. Okay, so you're set. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you, dear. 9A? 9A. No, I have 11A. Oh, sorry. Look like we're getting on. All right, so we loaded up on the plane here in LA. Looks like we're about to be heading off to San Francisco. Much bigger plane, a lot more comfortable. Only this time I'm stuck in the middle seat, so a little bit different. But uh, we'll be wings up here in just a little bit. From above your seat, firmly pull the mask to extend the plastic tube and start the flow of oxygen. Slip it over your head, wrap the belt around your waist, 
and secure it to the buckle in front. Sharon's already made it to the hotel. Her flight was earlier than mine, unless she had to do some other switching around too. But uh, the plan is see her here real quick, make the plan. Holla. Mobbing through this airport so I can catch this bus over to the hotel. And uh, it only took two flights to make this trip happen. Well, three. Uh, so we're here now. Let's go get checked in and figure some stuff out. Beautiful out here in San Francisco. The weather is gorgeous. Nice out here. Lots of things to do here. There's Fisherman's Wharf, um, a lot of restaurants, and it looks like on the bay where there's That's Chinatown, which is shopping. It's a good place to go meet some locals so we can find out the local things to do so we can try to go get as much of that in as we can. Plus, I need to ask some questions. <laughs> trying to figure out how to get down here to Fisherman's Wharf trying this lift stuff here and they keep sending us walking to different addresses we ain't got no lift yet but we're gonna get there eventually nope this might be our lift right here nope this our lift that's not our lift that's not our lift ain't no driver here there's our lift driver. We're gonna make it there eventually. How you doing? Not bad. We're trying to get down here and enjoy some of your city real quick before the night's over. Down here is beautiful. It's, I mean, I like your mountains and the, the water, the cleanliness. How long have you been in San Francisco? Uh, I've been here 30 plus years. As tourists, what do you suggest is a must-do for us? Okay, uh, you want to be a hundred percent tourist, or you want to just do some of the something stuff? cool, some of the local, something cool, something cool, like a good night spot or a good okay. place to go have a drink or. Well, I'm going to drop you off at Fisherman's Wharf. Just walk around there. There's good stuff mm -hmm. there. Ashley, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you? Hi, Ashley. How are you? from here Ashley? I am. I so am. I've got a question. I'm here for one night. <laughs> one night, one night only. One night, one night only. I'm working on some documentary stuff about San Francisco. So what is the must-do thing here? Oh, 
what kind of, I mean, For a one night sweet, okay, let's do this. For, there, there's a very, yeah, for eating, like, where's a great spot to go dine? Hmm. Gosh, these are tough questions. <laughs> Just off the plane here, throwing me some hard balls. <laughs> During our lift ride down to Fisherman's Wharf, I made a comment on the fog that just seemed to swallow the buildings and mass the mountains. I learned an interesting fact as a boomerang effect to my big mouth. Locals actually have a name for that. It's known as Carl the Fog. That's Carl with the K, by the way. In 2010, an anonymous person began a Twitter account for the San Francisco Fog. It even has a companion Instagram account. That's pretty cool. How, how about some good clam chowder? This is where we're heading in the right direction then. Do you like New England chowder? Where's a good spot for that? I like uh, Giordano Brothers is kind of like the quintessential San Francisco like sourdough bread and like um, clam chowder bread bowl place. Oh, right, Lou. That sounds that sounds like a spot. What do you say, babe? Let's go there. Try that out. It didn't take long to realize that the San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf is a happening spot. It was quite early on our arrival on a mere Tuesday evening. After the long trip from Denver, I could feel my stomach as if it were making out with my spine. It was certainly time to put our focus on some San Francisco grub. After our attempt to dine failed at our newly acquired compadre Amy's referral, we decided to scout out a new spot, landing us at the Chowder Hut. From the first bite, I thought we made a damn good choice. But the more I dug into my meal, the less satisfied I became. But not to reflect poorly on the establishment. The staff and fellow diners were great. Well, probably the best. No, no, it's actually a video. We're uh, checking out San Francisco. What's your name, man? Jose. Jose, Jose. Nice to meet you. We're from Colorado. So tell me, aside of obviously your amazing establishment, where would you go for a nice beer after this? What would you suggest? After here? Yeah, after we leave here. Cool place for us to go have a drink. Nice. We made the most out of every single opportunity. Um, nice hole in the wall? Cool. Whatever, whatever you correct me. Well, okay, so this area across the street, this is a bar. I don't know why it's really broken. It's a nice bar. Okay. Right across the street. Okay. One of them is a bar. And then if you walk across the street, you can see the bar. I'm not exactly sure what these are called. Yeah, I think it's called Bar Bar. 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 Bar uh, clown chowder. I mean, the, the oh, bread. uh, bread bowl and uh, sourdough. Oh, yeah, yeah, sourdough. Um, That's bread, sourdough. So, they give us, um, they give us. <laughs> 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 <That's good. laughs> Sorry, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> From the bees to the birds, San Francisco was full of character, beautiful scenery, stunning architecture, wonderful people with personalities from about all walks of life. This city is host to awesome street performers and some, to play politely, could use more practice which just adds into this versatile community. Just doing their thing for our benefit and a few bucks in the pocket. Or should I say, a few bucks in the bucket. Although you can't hardly see it because well, I don't want to jump it's in covered in fog, anything. which is more of that mystique freakiness oh. prison stuff. Yeah, no, no, I'll be I'll be Sax's top three hot picks. Coming up in third place as far as the things that I had the opportunity to experience, Musee Mechanique. This spot is totally awesome and truly allows you to feel the presence of the 20th century entertainment engineering. Full of over 300 mechanical penny arcade games and artifacts, if you're in the area, I highly recommend you stop in for a look-see. Mad props to museum owner Ed Zielinski for having one of the world's largest privately owned collections such as this. 
The amazing thing is that most of these games are actually operational and able to be played and enjoyed for just a quarter. Up in second place is world-renowned Boudin Bakery. This establishment is hands down intriguing, designed to allow everyone the inside look of its well-seasoned operations. From the dining room to its viewing platforms, Boudin Bakery pulls its weight in attraction. Founded in 1849 by Isidore Boudin and currently owned by Daniel Garrado, with locations of 30 cities scattered throughout California, with the main location housed in the Richmond District on the corner of 10th Avenue and Gary Boulevard. To date, this bakery still uses the same starter yeast bacteria culture it developed during the California Gold Rush. Make sure to visit on an empty stomach. Got plenty of food. Landing in the number one spot, Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. This is the 17th Madame Tussauds Museum worldwide, featuring famous figures from movies, music, politics, and popular culture. A truly stunning exhibit, a must see. So, hello from Ireland. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know what that means. It means hello in Irish. All right, so we just had a great time downtown in San Francisco, Fisherman's Wharf. And now we're heading back to the hotel. But it was pretty awesome down here. A lot of good people. I would say some good food, but the place that we ate, mm, rating's not going to be so great. But you can tell there's a lot of great food down here. We're on the other side of it. Oh, yeah, we're in a different angle. Hi. Hello. You don't got to scoot your seat up. It's not like we're in a Prius. <laughs> I, have, I have short legs. I'm good. How are you ladies doing? Good. How are you? Good. Where are y'all from? Ohio. Oh, hi. Just getting in? Nope, we're leaving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like 7.50 in the morning. Uh, I'm going to head on down here to the airport. Uh, so far, there's a ticket available for a straight shot from San Fran uh, into Denver. So we're going to try to get that ticket. So we're going to head on in. Let's go. Off to the airport. Like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. Thank you so much. I got to go. Here at the airport. We're going to grab this uh, ticket and go on in because you can see if uh, I can get on this flight. The world seems small. Direct flight not working out. I'm gonna have to go to Aspen first. Hopefully from Aspen I get to Denver. But this is my standby. This is how this stuff works. We meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. Take a 
Is that for it? it does what to show what? Uh, just checking to make sure that we don't get too slow. It's like our last slow speed morning. So. Oh, okay, yeah. right. Don't got enough air to keep it yeah. going. <laughs> yeah. So, cockpit of a very awesome jet. I'm trying to earn my wings. It's the closest I'll ever be to a pilot, probably. <laughs> Back in Denver, coming through the terminal about the plane. Alright, so back. Trip went okay. Uh, we'll get back to the house. Ready to bounce to out of here. Right now, back in Denver at the airport. Uh, sitting out here at the Westin. About to uh, take the shuttle over, get the car, get on back to the house, and then start editing all this wonderful footage, by the way. Uh, first episode, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, y'all like it. And, uh, San Francisco trip. So uh, we'll let you know. Like to the care of us on our trip there. Anyway, the sacks somehow. Overall trip difficulty. Coming in with three emojis because we did have to switch tickets a few good times. Friendliness of community? Coming in with five emojis, the people were awesome. Dining experience. Only coming in with three emojis. Although we know there's great dining in San Francisco, we missed it. Nightlife experience. Hands down, five emojis. San Francisco has it all. Overall affordability. Two emojis. San Fran is not the place to go broke. The final count. 18 emojis out of 25 making San Francisco a go-to place. Well, that was my trip to San Francisco. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, and it makes me happy. You know what happens when I get happy. That's right. Time for the happy dance. 